Good day, Grade 12 learners. Welcome to today's economics lesson. My name is Leah Mufukeng. This lesson is brought to you by the Department of Education in collaboration with Saibono Discovery Center and is broadcasted by Pagama Research and Development. In studio today, I am with Mr. Gabriel Letiani, who will be co-presenting with me. Today's topic for this lesson is the business cycle. But under the business cycle, we have subtopics. So we're going to look at the subtopic of composition and features of business cycles. We will also look at the causes of business cycles. And we'll also look at government policies to control business cycles. So as I've mentioned, the topic for today's Great 12 lesson is business cycle. So let's go back to where you started. In grade 10, the topic of business cycle was taught. You learned a lot about it, but you only focused on the phenomenon, the time series and the composition. You also looked at the reasons why business cycles exist, especially the exogenous reasons and the endogenous reasons. And you also learned about the effects of business cycles. In grade 11, the topic was not taught, but it progressed to grade 12. So in grade 12, these are the subtopics that you're going to learn about. It is the composition and features of business cycles. It is an explanation of causes, what cause business cycles. It is the government policy, and it's also the new economic paradigm to smooth out business cycle. And lastly, it is the features underpinning forecasting of business cycle. But today, like I've said, we will only focus on the first three. Okay. There are concepts that you need to know for you to understand what you're going to learn today. But I'm not going to go through all these concepts because as you'll be learning I will be also explaining the meaning of this concept. But it is important for us to look at the word business cycle. What is a business cycle? You can describe it as the recurring fluctuations in the economic activity relative to the economic trend or value. So let me go back to the word recurring fluctuations. So when we're talking about fluctuation, it means that we having ups and downs. Look at my hand. Business cycle has downs and ups and downs. So that we call fluctuations, whereby economic activities are increasing or are decreasing and increasing and decreasing. So why are we saying that business cycles are recurring? It is simply because they are not periodic. It is not something that we can say it will happen between January and November or between November and December. Certain economic activities have to change first so that the cycles recur. Another meaning, you can say it is a successive period of growth and decline. When we have moments of increasing economic activities, we're talking about those periods of growth. When we have moments whereby we're having decreasing economic activities, that's when we're talking about decline in economic activities. So this other concept, the contraction phase, the peak, the expansion phase, you will learn more about them as I'm presenting the lesson. The depression, the recessions, you will also learn more about them when we are dealing with the content. First, let me start by introducing this lesson by saying that in a business cycle, there are phases. We have two phases. We have upswing phase. If you don't want to call it an upswing phase, you will call it an expansion phase. The second phase is the downswing phase. If you don't want to call it a downswing phase, you'll call it a contraction phase. But someone can say, no, we have four phases of business cycles. Why? We, because under upswing phase, we have 
recovery and prosperity phase. And then under dancing phase, we have the recession phase and depression phase. So if you count, it's one, two, is three, is four. But if you come across a question which says, list or name the phases of a business cycle. If you write expansion phase and the upswing phase, you won't get full two marks because that's repetition. So you'll get marks for mentioning expansion or contraction or upswing or downswing or you will get marks if you mention recovery and prosperity or recession and depression so these are the faces we will use a, a diagram a model to explain the characteristics which fall under these faces again under a business cycle we have turning points and they are two we have a peak which is the highest turning point on the business cycle. We also have a trough, which is the lowest turning point. So please don't be confused. The peak and the troughs are not the faces of a business cycle. They are the turning points. Now let us look at the diagram and make sure that it becomes real. This is a diagram which shows the phases of a business cycle. Remember I mentioned the downswing phase or that contraction phase. It started from this point. Let me give the diagram labels. Let me say that this is point A, up to here is point B, up to the trough is point C, and then point D here, point E. Let me even extend it so that we have another trough at point G. Okay, so looking at this particular diagram, we want to see where does the contraction phase or the downswing phase start. The downswing phase will start at point A up to point C at the trough. This A up to C is the contraction phase or the dancing phase. From C, the trough, to point E, point E which is the peak, this is called the upswing phase or the expansion phase. So if you can see, yes, from the peak to the trough, there's a downward slope, okay? That is why we call it a downswing phase. From C to E, it's upward moving. So that's why we call it an upswing phase or an expansion phase. So I also mentioned that during the contraction phase or the downswing phase, we also have the recession phase and the depression phase. So you also need to know where the recession phase is. From point A to B, this will be our recession and then from point B to C this will be our depression our depression from point C to D it will be our recovery our recovery phase and then from point D to E it will be our prosperity 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 phase and then this is our vertical axis you can write index, you can label it real GDP, or you can label it index of economic, economic activities. And then the horizontal axis is re represented by the time. So when you label this axis, you write time, because data can be collected daily or weekly or monthly or annually. Then you see this line, we call it a trend line. It's a trend line. In its role, it shows the direction in which the economy is taking. So when you draw your graph, make sure that you label every point. Remember the turning points, the two turning points. I mentioned the peak at point A. It is the upward turning point of a business cycle and then the trough it is the lowest you can see that it is the lowest turning point of the business cycle now i want you to i want to take you through 
the characteristics of these faces to explain to you exactly what is happening under contraction phase, what is happening under the expansion phase. Okay. Remember in the beginning I said the expansion phase, which can also be called the, the, the upswing phase, consists of the recovery and the prosperity. So at this particular graph, it, is, it will be after the trough, immediately after the, the trough and the up above the trend line. This will be our expansion phase. You need to know what is happening during these phases. Number one, during the expansion phase, that is where there is an increase in spending. Government is spending. Households are spending. Businesses are also spending. As they are spending, you remember the multiplier lessons. Then there will be increase in the GDP. Because why? As we spend, we demand more. Businesses produce more. The moment businesses are producing more, it, there will be an increase in GDP. As businesses are producing more and the GDP is increasing, what happens? More workers will be employed. Employment also increases during this particular phase. Inflation also increases. Why? People are working, people have money. They are demanding more. If we demand more and supply does not respond at the same time, prices will go up. So it is during this phase that prices will also go up and that will cause inflation. What happens? There will also be a deficit during this phase, a deficit on the current account of the balance of payment. Somebody is asking himself, what is the BOP? BOP stands for balance of payment. Balance of payment is where we record transactions between South Africa and other foreign countries which we are doing business with. So if we import more goods, than we export, the BOP will experience a deficit. But if we export more and we import less, we will experience a surplus. But during the expansion phase, because everyone has what? Money. So if we have money, we have a tendency of even buying more goods from other countries. And that will lead to more imported goods than exported goods. Hence, in, during this phase, there will be what? There will be a deficit. There is high demand for credit. This is another uh, 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 characteristic of the expansion phase. People are borrowing money from the banks. Businesses are borrowing money from the banks. Property prices also increases. Price for land, price for Houses, price for business property will also go up during this phase. Interest rate will also increase. And you're wondering, what is interest rate? Uh, when the South African Reserve Bank increases the repo rate, that is the rate which Reserve Bank charges when it lends money to APSA, FNB, and other commercial banks. So if the repo rate goes up, banks also will have to increase interest rate. So it is during this particular phase whereby interest rate will go up. And what is interest rate? It is the rate which commercial banks like FNB, APSA, and others charge to their clients when they borrow money. So during this phase, interest rate will also be high. During this phase, remember, we're talking about this phase on the graph. The peak, that is where we find the peak, is found also during the expansion phase. And then what is the peak? Remember I said as I'm teaching, I will also be explaining this concept. The peak is the point where the economic activities are at its highest, meaning that employment here at the peak is very high. Spending is very, very high. Prices are very high. And the problem here at the peak is that even inflation is very high. So after the peak, what follows is the contraction phase. As you can see, we also have a peak here. After every peak, there is a contraction phase from point A up to point B. 
point C. This will be the contraction phase, down swing phase. Let's look at what is happening during the down swing or the contraction phase. It starts here, it ends at C. From A to C is contraction phase or down swing phase. It consists of recession and depression phase. What is happening during this phase? It is where there is the downward phase of the business cycle. Economic activities decline. Economic activities, they become less. Like what? Like spending. Businesses, during this phase, they spend less. And as they are spending less, even the GDP falls. That's why it's called down sweep phase. Employment decreases. What causes employment to decrease? It's because now we are spending less. If we're spending less, businesses won't make enough profit. They will be forced to retrench workers. So that's why employment is a problem during this phase. Business confidence declines. If business confidence declines, businesses, they start to invest less, not more. They borrow less money for investment. Income falls. Which income? Profits, wages and salaries. Because some workers will be working few hours than before when others will be without jobs. There is low demand for credit. Businesses, they borrow less. Household, they borrow less. You won't borrow money if you are not employed. Then that is where the Reserve Bank comes in. Interest rate becomes low during this particular phase. Interest rate will be low. Then there will be a surplus. Remember during the, 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 the expansion phase, I mentioned that there will be a deficit on the BOP. But during the contraction or downswing phase, there will be a surplus. How come? It is because we don't have ching ching. We don't have money. So we are unemployed. Businesses, we are not making profit. So as a result, we will import less and export more. Because our imports are less, there will be a surplus on the BOP. There is a trough. During the, 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 the downswing or contraction, there is a trough. Remember it started at the peak to decline up until things become worse and deepening at the trough. Trough, you can pronounce it like trough, like rough, rough, trough. You put an, a T before rough, it becomes a travel. So it is the point where economic contraction is at its lowest. Wages and salaries are at its lowest. Profits are at its lowest at this point. Employment is at its lowest at the trough. After the trough, what follows? Follows an expansion. So you saw that we started with a contraction then it will be followed by expansion then contraction expansion contraction that is why it is called a business cycle now i want to explain everything that happens under the recovery phase what i did before i looked at the whole phase like contraction to say this is what happens during uh, the recovery and during the prosperity, that is expansion. And then we also looked at contraction to say this is what is happening under the recession and the prosperity. But now I want to look deeper at each particular phase individually. So let's look at the recovery phase. Recovery for what? The economy can recover from a recession. I want you to note that one. The economy can recover from a depression. It is not all economies which will experience a recession and go deeper into a depression. Some economies, after the recession, they recover. 
There are those which do not recover, they go deeper into a depression. So this is the recovery from the recession or the recovery from the depression. What happens? Businesses during the recovery will start to build up stock. Just like you, imagine if you were very, very sick, you were hospitalized. After every illness, there is a recovery. When you recover, you start to look a little bit healthy. Even after the recovery, businesses will start. It is the beginning of an increase. Businesses will start to build their stock. Businesses will start to invest in capital goods. That is why capital investment in capital goods will increase. That's when they will be buying, borrowing money, buying uh, equipment, buying tools, raw materials, etc. More workers will be employed during this phase. As employment starts to increase, total income will also increase. Consumer spending will also start to increase. Production will also start to increase. Sales will start to increase. Profits will start. I'm emphasizing start, start. This start to increase during the recovery phase. Then we move to the prosperity phase. During the prosperity phase, that is when upswing or recovery builds momentum. There is the presence of optimism. Businesses want to invest more. But the obstacles start to appear. As more businesses are expanding, there will also be a shortage of skilled workers. There will also be a shortage of raw materials, which will hamper the, the request for goods and services. There will be a shortage of goods and services because supply does not always respond simultaneously with demand. Production costs will start to increase. People, because they have money, they will also import more. So imports will increase more than it happened during the recovery. There will be surpluses in the, sorry, the surpluses in the current account will decrease during this particular uh, 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 phase. So then we will also have a deficit on the BOP. Investment and consumer spending will remain high. Interest rate will increase. Prices are high, interest rate also increase. Then we enter the recession phase. The recession phase comes after the prosperity phase. Consumer spending, especially on durable goods like car furniture, houses, will decrease. There will be a downwards tendency in investment. Businesses will start to invest less. High interest rate and a diminution in price increases. More businesses are liquidated. What does this mean? Businesses, because they'll be not making profit, they'll be making lots and lots of losses. They will end up becoming bankrupt. They can even be sold. That's what the liquidation means. Still on the recession, production level and the standard of living, employment decreases, people are retrenched, they have less income, they're spending less, that's why spending also shrinks. Fewer goods are produced during the recession. The request of imported goods decrease. Businesses and consumers don't have enough money to import, so exports will be higher than imports and the current account will improve. Then, if the situation, we don't get quickly out of the recession, we will go deeper into a depression. Sometimes a recession can become so severe that it can change into a depression. Unemployment increases dramatically during the depression phase. And consumer requests for goods decline. If you are unemployed, you will spend less. Prices flat down and may even decline. Prices will drop because demand is less. Businesses profits will also decrease during the depression phase. 
And in many cases, the profit becomes a loss. So if you look at this particular slide, it has a summary of what I have just described. A summary for recovery phase, prosperity, recession, and the depression. Then let us look at the types of business cycles. We have different types of business cycle. A tip from me to you is that you need to know the name of the business cycle. How long does it take and what causes it? Three things. The name of the business cycle, how long does it take? What causes it? Let's start with the kitchen one. Kitchen cycles. It is called a kitchen cycle. It lasts for three to five years. What causes it? It is caused by adapting inventory levels in a business. The second one is called jackla. Jackla business cycle. It lasts from seven to 11 years. What causes it? Changes in net investment by government and businesses. We have the Kuznet cycle. This one lasts between 15 to 20 years and it is caused by changes in the activity in the building and construction industry. We also have the Contradiff cycle. This one lasts longer than 50 years. It can be caused by technological innovation. It can be caused by a war. It can be caused by discovery of a mineral or a new deposit such as gas. So hence I've said that the important thing, you know the name of the business cycle, how long does it last and what causes it. Let us look at the causes of business cycles. Business cycles can be caused by exogenous factors or by endogenous factors. So we're going to start first with the exogenous factors. If you don't want to call it exogenous factors, you can call it the monetarist factors. Let's see at what the monetarist believe causes the business cycle. So the monetarist believe that business cycles are caused by factors which are outside the economy. That's why the name is exogenous. So factors which are outside the economy are the ones which cause business cycles according to the monetarist explanation. They believe, the monetarist, they believe that markets are inherently stable and the disequilibrium which are found are caused by incorrect government policies such as monetary policy. That's what they believe. They also believe that government should not intervene in the economy. These exogenous factors that I mentioned that are outside of the economy can be weather conditions, can be market shocks, market shocks such as war, such as severe increase in the price of fuel, such as an increase in the money supply in the economy, such as structural causes. They can cause upswings and downswings. Then, let's hear what the Keynesians are saying. We also have endogenous causes of business cycles, or you can call them the Keynesian causes. The Keynesians, they believe that markets are inherently unstable. Remember the monetarists believe that markets are inherently stable. They don't even need government intervention. But the Keynesians feel that markets are inherently unstable. Therefore, government intervention is not required. It is the price mechanism that fails to coordinate demand and supply. That is their views. So if supply and demand are not equal, there will be upswings and downswings, there will be shortages or there will be oversupply or undersupply of goods and services. 
The government should intervene in order to smooth the peaks and the troughs. So with the K-Missions, they want government intervention so that they smooth out the peaks on top and the troughs on the bottom of the business cycle. So let's look at what the government can do to control business cycles. The aim, one of the aim, the government has got several aims, but one of the aim of the government is to achieve the best possible growth rates. The government wants to achieve the highest economic growth rate possible. So to do that, the government needs to apply policies. And there are two policies that can be applied. The monetary policy, which you are familiar with, and the fiscal policy. Okay. So it is important for you to know who is implementing which policy. Like I've mentioned, we have monetary policy, we also have fiscal policy. You need to know who is implementing which policy. So let's start with the monetary policy. The monetary policy is implemented by our central bank, which is the South African Reserve Bank. Usually we use the abbreviation SARB. It is the one that implements the monetary policy in order to control the supply of money and even prices. So for the Reserve Bank, South African Reserve Bank, to implement this policy, they have to use monetary policy instruments. If you are asked to list them, you will mention that it is interest rates, it's cash reserve requirements, open market transactions, moral suasion, and the exchange rate policy. I will explain them later. For example, during the downswing phase, or during the contraction phase, or during the re recession phase, or during the depression phase, the South African Reserve Bank can try to revive the economy by decreasing repo rate and interest rate. So if repo rate and interest rate are decreased or lowered, businesses and consumers will be able to borrow money and do what? And spend. So this we call the expansionary monetary policy. I will repeat. If it is utilized to revive the economy, then this will be called the expansionary monetary policy. During the upswing phase, where inflation is a serious problem, the prices are high, the Reserve Bank can increase interest rate. The Reserve Bank can be strict. Then we will call it restrictive monetary policy by trying to discourage people to borrow and spend, rather encourage them to save and invest. Let's move to the monetary policy instruments like I've promised you. I promise to explain them quickly for you. With the open market transaction, it takes place when the Reserve Bank increases or decreases the supply of money by selling government securities in the open market. If during the downswing phase, the government, sorry, if during the upswing phase, the Reserve Bank is selling the securities to the public, it means that there is too much money circulating. Then, those who are buying, money will flow back to the Reserve Bank and there will be less money circulating. Let's move to interest rate. With interest rate, the Reserve Bank can decrease it during the downswing phase or increase it during the upswing phase. So this will be done in order to control the money supply. Let's look at the cash reserve requirement. We all know that the Reserve Bank is the governor of all other commercial banks, your Capitec, 
your net bank, your standard bank, etc. So as a result, each bank should keep a reserve, a certain percentage of reserve at their reserve bank in the form of cash. So if the economy is overheating the res during the, the, the prosperity phase or at the peak, the reserve bank can increase the cash requirements to say all banks should keep a reserve of 50% at the reserve bank. This is a way of making them not to have too much money to offer in the form of loans. But during the downswing phase, the reserve bank can reduce the cash reserve requirement maybe to 10% to say the amount of reserve that should be kept at the reserve bank should be 10% so that banks have enough money to grant in the form of loans. We also have a moral suasion. Moral suasion comes from moral persuasion. The Reserve Bank can persuade banks during the, the, the peak or during the prosperity phase when there is too much spending, the, when businesses and consumers are borrowing a lot of money. The Reserve Bank can warn the banks not to grant too much credit during that particular phase. But during the downswing phase, in order to revive the economy, Reserve Bank can warn them, not even warn, can encourage the commercial banks to grant a lot of cash in the form of loans to their clients. Then we also have exchange rate policy. The central banks can either use a free floating exchange rate policy or manage floating rate policy. So our central bank, like I've mentioned, is the South African Reserve Bank. The South African Reserve Bank does not use managed floating rate policy. Our South African Reserve Bank uses free floating exchange rate. You'll see why. With the free floating exchange rate, the Reserve Bank will let the, the rent fluctuate because of market forces of demand and supply. The Reserve Bank will not even try to fix the exchange rate or to try to make its value be better. No, it will let it to operate within the market forces. But in other countries, they use managed floating where the central banks in those countries interferes by buying or selling currency to stabilize their exchange rate. But take note, our South African Reserve Bank does not do that. Let's look at another policy, which is the fiscal policy. The South African government can apply this policy, but through the Minister of Finance, who we find in the Department of Finance. Okay, and the instruments that the Minister of Finance can utilize are the following government expenditure or and also taxation. What will happen is that, for example, during the downswing phase or contraction phase, when the economy is weak, when economic activities are declining during the recession and during the depression, the government can increase spending. Remember the multiply. If the government start to construct roads, more people will be employed. They will have income. They will start to spend. The economy will be revived. The government can also simultaneously decrease taxation so that those who are working when they receive their disposable income is more because of less tax. Where even VAT, for example, can be decreased so that those who are spending, they can afford it to buy goods and services. So if the government is increasing spending and decreasing taxation, then during the downswing phase, we'll say the government is using expansionary fiscal policy. Expansionary fiscal policy. Then during the upswing phase, when we are experiencing the recovery and the prosperity phase, the government can decrease spending, especially during the prosperity phase. The government can spend less because if the government is spending more, that can also cause inflation. So the government will spend less. And to discourage people from spending on local products and imported goods, the government can increase 
taxation. When the government is increasing taxation and the government is spending less, we will say this type of a fiscal policy is a restrictive fiscal policy because the government is too strict here so that the economy does not overheat. Remember these lessons are brought to you by the Department of Education in collaboration with Saibono Discovery Center and the broadcast is brought to you by Pagama Research and Development. Right, you've done the lessons on uh, business cycles. Now we're just going to look at some of the questions or how to answer the questions, starting with the multiple choice questions. Right, let's look at this one. This one says, figure, employment figures in the business cycle will increase during A. Then you've got four options. In economics, you are given four options. Out of those four options, only one, it is correct. Remember, uh, here you usually see those economics learners or people who like to take chances uh, or who likes to play lotto. And then they will choose A, and then they make stroke and choose C, or they choose D, and they make stroke and choose A. And then in that way, we do not mark uh, that answer there. So please be certain that you only choose one correct answer. It says here, employment figures in the business cycle will increase during A. Right, the correct answer there, they will increase during the recovery phase of the business cycle. I hope you told wherever you are, you are also answering these questions and then you are excited that you are also getting them correct. Then if you look at the next question now, the next question says, changes in technology will lead to a business cycle. Then you've got four options again here. Then it says here, demand driven, supply driven, political driven, and then also if the other one says Kuznets. Then if you look at this one, none of these answers here are correct and here the correct answer there it is the one that lasts for more than 50 years because of the weight changes in technology will lead to so it's very important that you should read the the questions properly and then you should also know your your answer there so the answer will be the contractive you remember that the one that is more than 50 years the one that is more than 50 years. So that one, it is the correct answer there, but not the Kuznets one. Then if we continue, the next question says, the highest turning point on business cycle is known as the, remember you already done the turning points. You remember we've got only two turning points. You've got the highest turning point, and then you've got the lowest turning point there. Then here are the multiple choice questions. Four of them, remember Kretolfs, I still repeat here on the multiple choice questions. There are no more than one correct answers there. It means you cannot choose A stroke C or D stroke F. You cannot choose that. There is only one correct answer there. So according to this one, I hope you have answered it in your books. Let's see uh, which option did you choose there. Then the correct answer is option A, the pick the peak, it is the highest turning point of the business cycle. The next question. The next question says, fluctuating factors that originate outside the economic system. The fluctuating factors that originate outside the economic systems are referred to as what factors? Indigenous factors, Exogenous factors, endogenous factors, or international factors. So you would have done this outside, and then the correct answer there is B, the exogenous factors. Exo for outside, the external factors, uh, in other terms. That is the correct answer there. Again, grade 12 learners, read your question carefully. Underline the key words there. 
underline the keywords there so that you'll be able to get the correct answer. Then if we look at the next one, it says, with reference to the graph, name the economic period between A and B. Now you are looking at the graph, then you are saying, name the economic period between A and B. That period there, the whole period from A and B. Then you've got the following options. A, contraction. B, recovery. C, expansion. D, the peak. Now, according to this, as, as uh, Liam Fuke had already presented, you remember that you, uh, you've got phases here, you've got turning points here, and then you also have got periods uh, that you need to know. So now, according to this, you will know the turning point that is not what is required, the phase, it is not what is required. So then your answer would be between A or C. But now the graph says, with reference uh, to the graph, name the economic period a and B, that is the one that is going upwards. Then your answer there will be the expansion period. The answer will be the expansion period. Then the next question, name any two characteristics of downswing phase of the business cycle. You are asked to name any two characteristics of what? Not characteristics of business cycles, but of downswing. So in your graph, on your lesson, whatever you've learned, now you will know that downswings are associated with what? That is the question. The question requires you to know that downswings are associated with what? And then here are the possible answers. Downswing, an increase in unemployment, a decrease in economic activities, reduced production, a rise in closing down of businesses, and decreased levels of consumer purchases those are associated with the downswing it means the economy is between a recession and depression it means the economy is doing well it's not doing well there that is why you look at there's an increased unemployment people are starting to lose their jobs uh, production start to decrease there's a decrease in economic activities uh, level of consumer spending because people are no longer employed so they no longer spend more on consumer goods and services and our next question says name any two external reasons for business cycle name any two external so another examiner could say name any two exogenous factors it is the same thing name any two external reasons for business cycle or name any two external factors for business cycle then you'll answer it as follows climate change or natural disasters those are beyond um, our control those are the external reasons we cannot control those foreign trade shocks drastic increase in oil prices or price war they are not within our economy of south africa we do not have full control over those so those are the external reasons structural changes Political reasons, if you look at all those things, those are the external reasons, things that we do not have control of, things that happen outside our economy, those are the reasons, uh, external reasons that causes business cycle. Then the next question, it says, name any two views of business cycle or okay, care, or name any two views why business cycle or okay. care you know that you've done the two views. Let's see. The first one, it is the monetarist approach, which is the exogenous. And then the other one, it is the Keynesian approach, which is the endogenous uh, views of why business cycle. Okay, you remember the first one, we mentioned that markets are inherently stable, and therefore, there shouldn't be government intervention. The other one, we mentioned that markets are inherently stable and there's a need for government intervention then the other one says name any two types of business cycle so you should be smiling when you see uh, the, the lower order questions here you will see them uh, under two point 
1.1 or 4.1.1 that says name any two type of business cycle you should be smiling when you see such and I usually realize economics learners on this one you even write more than what is required because you would have known uh, the business cycles we only require two economics learners not more than that so if you write uh, about four of them as given here only the first two are going to be marked uh, it's the kitchen it's the juggler it is the kuznet and it is the contractive those are the two types of business cycle and this one the long question the middle order question it says what impact could this investment it is very important for you to understand the terms economics learners or sanctions have on business cycle so this investment we know it is the withdrawal of investment so we would expect that foreign investors they would invest in south africa uh, but now if they do not invest if they withdraw their investment or if a certain country sanctioned us in South Africa or they block us uh, from trading with them. What impact could that have on the business cycle? The first one says it will lead to a decrease of economic activities. The business cycle will experience a downward spiral because now there's a withdrawal of investment. Then here it says study the graph below and answer the questions that follow. As you can see, the graph starts there, it starts to peak, it starts to recover, then it gets to the peak, recession, trough. Then if you look at here, there's what we call a positive output gap, and then down here, there's what we call a negative output gap. So it means from the recovery there, up until we reach our peak, and then from the peak, up until we reach our trough. From the recovery to the peak, that is what we call our positive output gap. And then from recession up until we reach our trough, it is the negative output gap. So we, let's answer the questions now. The question says, give an alternative term for the recovery or growth as depicted from where? From the trough to the peak. What is an alternative term for recovery? then your answer will be upswing. It is going up. The economy is recovering. That is the alternative term. Another question. Unemployment will be worse at which point of the business cycle? When will unemployment be worse? That means more people are unemployed. When will unemployment be worse? At which point of the business cycle? Then your answer will be at the trough here down here the economy is at depression that is the west 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 point there unemployment is very 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 high the next question briefly describe the term business cycle if you are listening carefully to our presenter that is what she started with so it is very important that you look at the economic concepts because they are going to be asked economic uh, le learners so business cycle, it is described as successive periods of increase or decrease in economic activities. Successive periods of increasing and decreasing in economic activities. That is the business cycle. So it continues, it continues, it continues, it continues. Uh, it is as straight as that one. Even if when you are asked to write an essay, you can add, write that definition there of business cycle up to a maximum of two marks. The next one, why is the negative output gap reflected during recession? So as you can see, there is our negative output gap there. Now the question is, why is it reflected during the recession? Your answer or possible answer to this question, many business close during a recession it relates to a decrease in the supply of goods and, and services. That is why we see it during the recession phase. The next question, analyze the type of government policy that could, be, that could effectively be applied when the economy is at its peak. 
the type of government policy that could effectively be applied when during the peak. That means when the economy is at its highest, when the economy is at its highest, which government policy can we apply there? You remember that uh, during our lesson we mentioned the two government policies, the fiscal policy and the monetary policy. And then we also mentioned their instruments, which is government spending and taxation. And then we also mentioned money supply and interest rates. So when the economy is at the peak, which government policy can we apply? The government could apply restrictive monetary and the fiscal policy. So rather than uh, expansionary, because the economy is already at the peak, the economy could have already expanded. So when it's at the peak, everything is high there, including inflation. So for government to cool it off, for, for government to dampen it, then they will apply what you call a restrictive. That means they will try to control it so that it can get back to normality. The government there could apply restrictive monetary and the fiscal policy. Be careful. This is a formal question. So just writing the first line alone or including the restrictive monetary and the fiscal policy and leaving it there, that will not qualify you for four marks. Then another mark or another two marks comes from during a peak, employment levels and uh, income levels are high, which fuels what? Inflation. As I mentioned there to say, there at the peak, everything, is, inflation is high, unemployment is at its lowest, consumer spending is very high. So at that point, inflation is likely to, to appear there. So the government will apply restrictive policies, whether it be monetary policy, whether it be the fiscal policy, so that they can try to, to cool off the economy. Another possible answer, it says, restrictive measures will not only target inflation levels, but could increase the unemployment levels. So now you see it, there is a contradictory statement there. As much as now we are trying to cool off the economy because we want to control inflation, another problem arises, which is what? There could be an increase in, in unemployment levels. So that's how you answer the question, economics uh, learners. For well, eight more questions, Eight more question says, explain the endogenous reasons for business cycle. Explain the endogenous reasons for business cycle. So whatever is happening inside the economy. How do you explain it? You're going to say, the Keynesian school or interventionists hold the view that markets are inherently unstable. So what does that mean if markets are inherently unstable? It says the level of economic activity constantly or erratically overshoots and undershoots by the economy's potential growth path. Then another statement, this is an eight mark question. The price mechanism fails to coordinate supply and demand. You still continuing? The price or prices are simply not sufficiently flexible, particularly when they have to be adjusted downwards. The Keynesian believes that business cycles are part of the way economists operate normally. Endogenous forces like mismatches are responsible for cyclical fluctuations. Government needs to intervene to smooth out the business cycle. So, because markets are inherently unstable, there is a need for government intervention. Price mechanisms on themselves, they fail to coordinate demand and supply. And the Keynesians believe that business cycles are part of the way that market economies operate normally. That is an eight, an eight mark question. Then another one, it says, how could the monetarist view point on government policies cause contraction on business cycle. How could the monetarist view on government policies cause the contraction? Now you remember that contraction 
it is the decline in economic activities while expansion it is the increase in economic activities so this view of monetarist how could that under those government policies how does the monetarist believe or how do they view that these government policies cause contraction in business cycle it's another eight mark question let's see so the monetarist believes that markets are inherently stable through the mechanism of demand and, and supply. The market is self-regulatory and adjusts itself if any disequilibrium occurs. The departure of equilibrium is caused by external forces or forces outside the, the market. A contraction or a downswing in the economy it is caused by inappropriate government policies now you are answering the question but first you are giving us the background of the monetarist view of uh, what causes business cycle or what business cycle occurs you started down up there to say markets are inherently unstable the market is self-regulatory the departure of the equilibrium is caused by external forces or forces outside the market then now you are answering the question because you have not answered the question the first three lines, you are still explaining the monetarist view. And then the, last, the fourth line, you are saying contraction or downswing in economy uh, is caused by inappropriate government policies. If you continue, the government intervened in the market by applying unnecessary contractionary policies. So you can see now this one is against the government intervention. The monetarist viewpoint is against the, the government intervention. Undesirable reduction in the money supply causes the economy to spiral down. In addition, inappropriate monetary measures like increased interest will negatively impact on economic growth. You are still answering the question to say how does the monetarist view uh, believes that the government causes contraction in the business cycle. Then it says here, in addition, if inappropriate monetary measures like uh, increased interest rates will have a negative impact on economic growth. And if you continue, government should carefully control the stock of money so that it does not distort the equilibrium that the market forces will automatically establish. Great. 12 learners, that was an 8 mark question. If you look at those answers there, you are given more possibly a variety of answers the way you should approach the question. You can even write more than that, but pay attention to, to mark allocation. It was a middle order, high order question for 8 marks that you need to answer that. Give us the background, answer, and then after that, you answer the question. The other one says now, how has the Keynesian school of thought influence the business cycle so the keynesian is associated with the endogenous factors within the economy so how do they how they influence the the business cycle it's a high order question same applies it is an eight mark question let's see first one you are giving us the background of what does this mean or what does the keynesian school of thought mean or what do they believe in or what is their theory they believe that the view is that the markets are inherently unstable therefore the government intervention is necessary to do what to stabilize the economy okay they argue that changes in value of total expenditure bring about changes in demand the government can intervene through the fiscal policy, which includes taxes and government spending. Unlike the monetarist viewpoint, that one discourages government intervention because they believe that markets can function on themselves. Uh, market, markets can self-regulate. The price mechanism can correct them through demand and, and supply. With this one, the Keynesian view, this one believes that Government should intervene in the economy. And how do they intervene? Uh, through the fiscal policy, 
which also include taxes and government spending. During a recession, government can increase its spending and reduce taxes to stimulate economic growth. Now, as you remember, the phases of the business cycle. So at the point, which is this side, during the recession phase, the economy is not doing well there. So if the economy is not doing well, it will be unnecessary for increased taxes because that will decrease the disposable income. So therefore, what should the government do to control the downturn so that we can have an upswing or we can have a recovery in the business cycle? The government will increase spending and they will reduce what? Taxes. So if they increase spending, they will be spending on, uh, on, on in infrastructure, they will be spending on social transfers, and they will be increased uh, uh, disposable income. And then on the other side, when taxes are reduced, when your personal uh, income tax is reduced or pay, you'll have more disposable income. It means spending will also increase and therefore recovery. Uh, start to take place. When company tax are reduced, company can, uh, can, can employ more people, then the company can pay or increase the salaries of the employees, which will, will stimulate demand for consumer goods and, and services. In that way, the economy will start to move away from recession and the economy will start to, to recover. That is the belief uh, that is brought to us by the Keynesian uh, view. This will increase the level of economic activity, e.g. production, employment, income, and demand, as I've already explained those. During a peak, the government can increase taxes and reduce government spending. Now, this is the opposite of the first one. During the peak, which is the highest turning point, then how can the government apply the, uh, the fiscal policy? They can apply it by increasing taxes and reduce what? Government spending. The economy is already overheating. So if the economy is overheating, to control that, reduce people's disposable income by doing what? By increasing taxes and by reducing government spending. You are trying to control the disequilibrium that may occur. This will result in reduced income, reduced demand for factors of production, and also reduced uh, expenditure in that regard. Right, great 12 learners, we have come to the end of our lesson for today. Thank you so much uh, for tuning in.